The FNM deputy leader urging struggling homeowners to protest the prime minister's abuse of power. Government's reparations committee announced today new questions raised about value-added tax plus a new spelling bee champion crowned last night. We've got those stories and a whole lot more. I'm Vonnie Toot and MB12 starts now. Tonight, Deputy Leader of the Free National Movement, Loretta Butler-Turner, is calling on all Bahamians on the brink of losing their homes or whose homes have already been repossessed by banks to take a stand against the Prime Minister, whom she says crossed the line when he stepped in and prevented a tax dodger from losing his home. Butler-Turner also blasted Michael MP V. Alfred Gray and Minister of State for Legal Affairs Damien Gomez for praising Christie's actions, insisting they are defending the indefensible. I would say let's do it. We've got to demonstrate that our communities, our, our, our society and existence as we see it today is being compromised by ineffective and incompetent governance. As government officials were busy defending Prime Minister Christie's action to save Ishmael Lightborn's home when a bailiff showed up with a court order, FNM Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner was on social network Facebook encouraging struggling homeowners to stand up against what she called a shameless abuse of power. As described by V. Alfred Gray, in his own words, a bailiff was there to serve um, uh, um, I guess a summons to the individual who was rescued on the spot. That's circumventing the law. That's circumventing the ability for that lending institution to be able to secure their interests. And that in and of itself, it's not just about compassion. Butler Turner urged activists and struggling homeowners to join her and the free national movement sooner rather than later in a peaceful protest outside parliament to demonstrate their outrage over the Lightborn scandal. She says the Christie administration has let down hundreds of homeowners who bought into the idea of a mortgage relief plan on the campaign trail, a plan, she says, that has failed miserably. Bahamians do want to do for themselves, but when they see that the prime minister of a country uses his power to rescue not just a wealthy businessman who has clearly demonstrated that he has no desire to abide within the rules of law in our country, whether it's paying his taxes or whether it's paying his mortgage. They now have to question, where do they stand? The FNM deputy also hit out at Michael NPV Alfred Gray, who said last week, God will never bless the free national movement if its leaders continue not to open their bowels of compassion to people. It was the most idiotic defense of the indefensible. Instead of defending what she called the indefensible, the Long Island MP suggested that government officials use their energy to come up with a viable mortgage relief plan. She says she's not surprised the government's initial effort at mortgage relief failed. We had already had those conversations, meaning the Hubert Ingram um, F&M administration. We'd already had those conversations with the um, Bahamas Mortgage Corporation, with the various commercial banks and the mortgage, uh, the various uh, lending institutions to ensure that they go to the table with these individuals that were facing hardship so that they could renegotiate their mortgages. But the challenge that there was is that many people had also lost their jobs. And there's, it's very difficult to renegotiate a loan if there are no funds there to go to the payment of the interest. And that was the problem that we faced. Amid ongoing concern over value-added tax, the Financial Services Minister revealed today that the final rate of taxation will depend on taxes government can collect from web shops and other institutions. Jasmine Bonamy explains. The more, the more revenue you can tax, the lower the rate is going to be. So if you find other areas to be able to generate government revenue from, uh, certainly that has an effect on, on the rate of a uh, value-added tax or really maybe even any other tax system. Pinder says the government is determined to broaden its tax base and find other avenues of revenue generation so that VAT will not be solely relied upon. One of the ways to collect more revenue is taxing web shops. 
Tourism Minister Obi Wilskum announced earlier this month that Cabinet would be reviewing a proposal to regulate web shops. It is expected that the government would tax web shops and the winnings of those who play games of chance. Prime Minister Perry Christie said the proposed regulations would be tabled when the government brings the gaming bill to Parliament. Christie also announced earlier this month that the government would introduce VAT at a lower rate. Pinder said today that the government is still working to determine the introductory rate. And I think one of the reasons why the Prime Minister could say we're not going to come in at a 15 percent rate uh, is because there's now discussions with regularization and taxation of domestic gaming and that industry. Well, what that does, that broadens the tax base. And when you broaden the tax base, tax rates come down and can be lower uh, with a less impact on Bahamian people. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do. And the minister insisting that while the government does have the final say on tax reform, Form. He says the private sector also plays a major role. One of the government's considerations will be the input of the Coalition for Responsible Taxation, which is introducing a study on VAT and other tax alternatives. He is going to take into consideration the view and the study that the tax coalition has undertaken currently, which is still in process. While the coalition said it will present an alternative that the government could effectively implement by July 1st, Pinder said the coalition's report could affect the timing of the implementation. Yeah, if we weren't going to take it seriously, we would put in value added tax right away and, and, and forget the whole consultation process. The, um, there's no um, benefit for any party for the, the government to encourage private sector to, to really put a lot of resources behind a very thorough study and then not take it into account and not take it into consideration. Uh, that's not to say everything presented is going to be correct or consistent with government policy, but certainly um, the Prime Minister has indicated that uh, the policy and implementation of value-added tax would take into consideration to the extent possible the opinions of uh, the private sector. Meantime, Prime Minister Christie has hinted that he may have to delay that implementation. It was expected that the new tax module would be introduced on July 1st. President of the Chamber of Commerce Chester Cooper said while it is still unclear what direction the tax conversation will go, the Chamber is helping businesses prepare for the introduction of VAT. The Chamber established the Coalition for Responsible Taxation. Generally, that the business community supports tax reform, whether it's VAT or whether it's some other form of taxation, I believe that's what the debate is about at the moment. But we know that tax increase in government revenues is critical to the soundness of the Bahamian economy. We believe that as a chamber, the private sector, individuals and businesses must continue to be engaged in the process. We believe that the government must lead the way uh, with respect to tax reform. But we believe it's a subject that's too important. Uh, for the private sector, the academic community, and private individuals uh, not to engage in. And this is why we try to be engaged at every level. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell has appointed the Bahamas' National Reparations Committee ahead of a formal push by CARICOM heads aimed at getting reparations, debt cancellation, and an apology from former European colonizers. During a news conference held at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs today, Mitchell said the committee, headed by attorney Alfred Sears and Philip Smith, have until June to create a robust public education campaign that would mobilize communities and secure Bahamian support. However, he acknowledged there would be naysayers. As it unfolds, it turns out that people will accept, will come to accept that it's the right thing to do. So I think you're going to have naysayers uh, either way you look at it. And uh, as you know, as I, I, I tried to indicate in as gentle a way I, as I can, that those of us who came up in the 60s uh, and the 70s are astounded at uh, how polite a society we've become on this subject, which still resonates throughout all of the things that we do. Uh, it affects all of the things we do. Reparations is the process of repairing the consequences of crimes committed and the attempt to remove debilitating effects of such crimes upon victims and their descendants. The committee has more than 20 members, including historian Dr. Gail Saunders, Mary Star Catholic Church Rector Father David Cooper, Sojourner College President Teresa Moxie Ingram, Rastafarian Movement Representative Whitman McKinney, and journalist Travis Cartwright Carroll. Sears said during a meeting held earlier this month, the commission made a number of recommendations, including... An apology 
reparation, indigenous people's development, contribution to cultural institutions, public health, literacy program, African knowledge program, psychological rehabilitation, technology transfer, and debt cancellation. Co-chair Philip Smith says it's an issue all Bahamians should care about, noting countries like the Bahamas still bear the scars of slavery. We choose to have a blind eye if when we look around, not just in the Bahamas, but in all of the Americas, in the Caribbean, North and South America, and don't see the lingering negative effects of that terrible industry called slavery. We also turn a blind eye if when we look at history and we look at Europe and we don't see the very positive financial benefits that slavery brought to them. Mitchell said he expects the committee to put its preliminary research and recommendations forward by the summer. He says he hopes there will be a national discussion on this issue, which he says has been treated as a silent subject for too long. Following several power outages in recent days in New Providence, Bahamas Electricity Corporation Executive Chairman Leslie Miller says no further service disruptions are expected. The most recent outage, which lasted around an hour, was on Sunday in eastern New Providence. Miller, who was contacted for comment today, said two of the corporation's engines at its Blue Hills and Clifton Pier power stations tripped separately as a safety precaution. He said the outages affected pockets of New Providence for short periods of time, but insisted it is nothing to get concerned about. While he did not say exactly why the engines tripped, Miller said each engine has a built-in kill switch, which is a safety feature that prevents the engine from sustaining any damage. When MB12 returns, the labor minister unfazed by customs union threats. Plus, a Queens College student wins the national spelling bee. So stay with us.